Yeah. 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 the rain stop it's beautiful tide will rise very soon it's a massive piece of metal oh i say about 17 inches deep but the problem it's attached to a timber on this side there's a smooth timber so that's a summer project it will not i need an art tie like this and they're pretty rare so okay um, I will try a little bit more, but I don't think I'd be able to pull that out. Just right again. Moving my feet. That, uh, that's pretty fast. The well, tide came pretty fast, but I was just on the edge of the uh, deeper brook. Sorry. And from that one, were you in that hole? Tide will turn soon and there's a six foot tide uh that will be above my head i guess and this is the object and look at the shovel this is the depth right here that uh that will be about the end of the piece of metal to be true okay so and this is a piece of wood here and this is all metal and this is a piece of wood there and it's to me look like a rudder or the joke is on me okay let's remove this from the hole okay this is the river and um, beside the river in a hole actually and this came out of it this is a piece of wood and that this could be a rudder and this could be the blade of the rudder as uh, this was pointing this way and the handle that way okay so I'm gonna put it back in place to show you the tide's gonna turn very soon and there's nothing else in that old little piece of branches and stuff so it's a natural silt okay let's do that It is a rudder blade, wood, about mm, one inch, and water all around me. So, and this is the hole, and the wood blade for the rudder, Manticore, favorite river, and I did that. <laughs> that big hole there, what do you think? Okay, I'll fill it up next week when tide get lower. The river will soon reverse. It's time to go. I retrieve the rudder blade. So now that's confirmed the uh, 
iron shaft I extracted yesterday is part of a rudder. This is the rudder blade. I have the corner right here perfect. All around, a little bit missing here, but not much. And a nice curve. And the rest of the piece of wood that's missing here is embed into the iron shaft. And I have the strapping. You can see the shape. So what I'm doing now is I cover this. And every day I move the dressing, if you want, to dry it. And it's covered with a foam on top of it and plywood and weight. So it dry very flat. Okay, let's try this. Okay. So I hit the metal. See, this is copper. Okay. Let's see if that will bite in. There we go. Next, the electrolysis. like after three days the mud is getting softer and the blade of wood missing is in bed right here and I wish I have the, the long tailor because at the end often there's a little ball or even rope work so I know the location in the river I might try sometime next week to go get it if it's still there very 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 slowly you can feed it when it's uh, just our clay doesn't sound the same as iron it's hollow this is pretty geometric. I wonder what that is. Might be just a rock. There seems to be wood right here. This is a horseshoe. Archer knife. Okay, it is ready to go back into electrolysis. I uncover metal surface here and here and see the sea worm damage. Maybe the rest of the handle can be fine or not. And everything is holding strong so far. 
Okay, here is the laminate. There's a thin layer of iron on this and some there. Magnet. So I can tell by, it's very thin, it's one, probably one eighth of an inch. This section here. So this not to be as thick as it was when it's all done. This is stronger here. And then right here. And after that, it's wood. So there was a piece of metal missing here. This could be the pin. I think it is a pin. Yeah. So it's a plate of metal that is wrapped around and it's rivet there and there. The metal starting here, and it goes about up to here, most likely to connect to the pin. So, not sure about that yet. BB comes here if this is metal. Fiber of the wood goes in that direction, and the fiber of the wrought iron goes in that direction. maybe two layers plates one strapping and then one on top um, I see with some sometimes a little shells inside little rocks this is more shiny so that could be tar okay that's enough for the knives okay and that concretion you see a little piece of shell right here and I remove about the quarter inches above this so at this point, I'm not scared to use the hammer a bit harder blow because I know it is not uh, iron. It's just the buildup of time and the iron is right there. Right here, that's the iron right there. This is not iron. Okay, I wonder if this is also metal or is it finishing here? Okay, this is metal right here. Oops, sorry. There you go. Okay. So, when I clear this section here, I will exactly know what the, it looked like. And it will be most likely the same thing on the other side. Concretion. It is not wood, it's concretion. So it's okay.
because this has to attach to the boat. Usually it's a hole on top and the pin the bottom. Okay. And the air strap was further down on the rudder, right about right here. Now let's do the other side. Ooh. right here so I'm not sure what this is so I'm gonna go around it Clear plate of metal, and it was probably up to right here, and then this corroded, and the wood is very soft as you can see. Okay, what else can we do? Hear me a little bit. Not ready yet. It's not ready. It doesn't want to go. So this could be. A nail right here. Not sure. Shit. Okay. Very good. So I clear the line. Very good. Put the negative in the water. 
touch the sacrifice, I get 17.4 volt. Very good. Okay, here are the plans for today. I will protect the wood with tongs oil before it dries, otherwise it will collapse. And I will mix turpentine and lince oil to treat the mellow surface. And to get going, I'm gonna use the heat gun first to give a surface dry. Oh, come on. Battery dead. Okay, as you can see, it oxidized as fast as I clean it. I will start my preparation of turpentine and lens oil. Thin enough so it penetrates the first coat and now hopefully it goes underneath the metal too. Okay, uh, let dry for a few minutes and I can turn the rudder and do the other side. I will uh, use the air dryer and dry the surface, the surface of the wood and put the first coat of tongue's oil. Um, if I wait, the whole thing will split and collapse and I am going to see if I can progressively feed the wood. And I don't think the tongue's oil will entrap the water in. It will evaporate anyway. So let's uh, let dry a little bit. And this process is an ongoing thing until I'm happy with it. So probably in our two weeks of doing this, touching here, touching there. And when I see it's like getting to be where I want it, then I stop. This was done a few weeks ago and I like the result. It's not sticky. It's a bit waxy. And so far, after two weeks, I really like the look. And I also like the fact it's turning black. It's make it richer in a way. So you can see all the grain. Now, is it a reversible process? I guess under the heat it will be, but I intend just to keep applying as needed until there's no more rust activity. 
and that's the idea of um, preservation I guess and this anchor yes was found in the same neighborhood as this actually I found four anchors of different pattern and they were pointing into an area and this is where I went there near the water that I found the rudder so obviously the boat were at um, low tide they were uh, there at high tide they certainly swing a little bit up and down the current I mean up the current and so that's what gave me the clue to go in that direction which is about 50 feet away and I found the rudder but it's quite an interesting uh, wrought iron work this anchor put together I really like it okay those two cannonballs were also found in that same neighborhood it's not the first time i found cannonball so i know there was an unloading of ammunition from uh, fort gasparo into beaver toward fort beausejour and those one most likely end up in the water and this is the result after three weeks of uh, scraping and uh, drying and uh, I like the black look I know back then uh, lint soil was used and turpentine and also tar tar was used a lot on boats so this is the tar look In the next few months, I will consolidate this rudder and try to recreate the fitting using my forge uh, with the trace on the wood left and the little piece of metal that I saved. So that'd be a fun project. Like this, and cover with sod all the way there. Many sections, many sections still there. Like. Now this fell most likely over the dike. Right? I am here and back yes. to recover that piece of wood and that believe Okay. Okay. Yes. I've been doing this for six years now. And I want to do something. Where am I going with this? And and make it a hobby. So this is another video about this hobby. Okay, you caught me talking to myself and try to uh, check uh, my script. Okay, so um, now we got a tailor and we have to find what it match. And at first I said it was a double enter like a whaler. And I kind of changed my mind because the tiller or the handle is so short. Even if it's broken, it was not, it didn't look like a, be a long profile. It was a short profile. Therefore, it should match a boat with a stern a transom. Uh, somebody sit way in the back. And I'm thinking uh, something about maybe 18 feet long maximum. And the top of the side of the boat to the keel would be about 32 inches. Okay. Uh, we know it was built by uh, using a forge. So, and also it got some style to it. It was not improvised. Um, it, it's a complex, well, it, it's, uh, it's a well done uh, forge uh, tailor combined with wood. So maybe it was not the first one. At least this one was well done for sure. And uh, there's no bronze fitting used. Um, Thankly more like a shallop. And so uh, uh, this, all this image passing by you, they all, the one I found on the internet, tried to uh, pinpoint what boat could it be. So, and this rudder uh, was made to not exceed the keel so it was well adapted for the raver and also not to catch seaweeds so i think it is a shallop on about 15 18 feet long maximum and as for the age goes uh, 
there's a lot of corrosion on it and there were uh, two cannonball not too far from um, the same summer and they had about the same buildup of rust as the rudder and also at the same layer but we also know that this river is silting very fast first in 1755 when the um, dike were broken and again in 1945 when finally the big dike got uh, open so there's a lot of silt and layers and branches and I think it's something between 1755 and maybe 1800. Uh, I'm pretty sure after that they were using bronze fitting. I'm not too sure, but I think so. Okay. Thank you for watching, and I got nothing else to say. Bye. Je <laughs>